Witch Tree, Chapter 21. Bongo, I said early that morning as the last stars faded like weary fireflies, there's something I need you to do. Does it involve potato chips, Bongo mumbled. Nope, then I'd rather sleep. It's about Samar. You promised you'd let me sleep in. I didn't promise. You implied. I want to grant Samar's wish. This roused Bongo, meaning he got up. She fluttered down to her favorite perch, the one that she'd nicknamed Home Plate. Bongo likes to, likes to watch the kids play softball at the elementary school. Ah, uh, Red, you don't make wishes happen. You're the place where wishes go. You're like a, like a leafy garbage can, in a good way. For 216 rings, I've sat on my roots and listened to people hope for things. And a lot of times, those wishes never happen, I'm guessing. Bongo tucked a feather into place. Sometimes that's for the best. Remember that kindergartner who wanted a bulldozer? I'm passive. I just sit here watching the world. You're a tree, Red. That's kind of the job description. This is a good wish, and it's a wish I can make happen, I paused. Well, we can make happen. Yeah, I had a feeling that's where this is going. Bongo glided to the ground. Look, I heard Samar's wish. How exactly are you going to find her a friend? You'll see, I said, hoping I sounded more confident than I felt. Red? Bongo paced back and forth. With each step, her head bobbled forward. We've got more serious issues, pal. Francesca's talking about turning you into toothpicks. And your residents are frantic about where they're going to move if that happens. She came close and nudged me fondly. Of course they're worried about you, too. I know that. Fresh baked, fresh baked bread poked her head out from under the porch. Remember, that's the skunk. It was barely dawn, and only the white stripe running the length of her face was clearly visible. I've offered to take in one of the three families temporarily, she announced. Preferably the possums. They're better behaved than the ewes. That's very generous of you, Fresh, I said, but I was interrupted by Big You, the mother of the three raccoon babies. She was in my large hollow, grumbling under her breath. I beg your pardon, she exclaimed. You, you, and you have excellent manners. They're too inquisitive, said Fresh Baked Bread. They're always poking their noses where they shouldn't be. Grabbing things with those little paws of theirs? Well, at least they don't stink, Big You cried, and your children have paws last time I checked. Hairy spiders, the possum mother, peeked out cautiously from her hollow. So there's the possum mom with her babies. Possums name themselves, themselves after things they fear. Stink is in the nose of the beholder, said Harry Spiders, and while I personally think your children have a delightful odor, fresh, I've already got dibs on the woodpile two doors down. Should anything happen to dear Red, she patted me. No offense, love, just thinking ahead, you know. No offense taken, I assured her. I saw the pile first, Big You cried. Share the skunk den, Harry Spiders said. I wouldn't be caught dead in that place, Big You exclaimed. Not now. Not that I know my inquisitive children aren't wanted. Well, they're a bit boisterous, said Harry Spiders. At least my children have spunk, said Big You. Your kids faint when they see you, when they see their own shadows. Plain possum is a useful adaptation, said Harry Spiders, her pink nose twitching. The world is a dangerous place, and in any case, we can't control it. It just happens. If I may interrupt, came a cool voice from my highest branches. It was Agnes. There's a nice-looking linden tree two blocks away, just vacated by a gray squirrel family. We're looking at it as a possibility, and there's a tomcat that runs loose there. Collar, no bell, so that's an issue. Also a big, slobbery dog. In fairness, all dogs are slobbery, Bongo observed. I really think you should all calm down, I interrupted. Let's not buy trouble. One day at a time, my friends, who knows what tomorrow may bring. The mothers glared at me. I heard a great deal of sighing. Too much wise old tree, I asked. Too much wise old tree, old tree Bongo confirmed, as everyone retreated into their homes in a huff. They're all a bit tense, Bongo said, worried about your, your situation. I can see that. I'm worried too, Bongo said in an almost whisper. I know, I said gently, but every cloud has a silver... Red, Bongo interrupted. Sorry. There must be something I can do, Bongo said. You're a good friend, Bongo, but sometimes 
you can sometimes all you can do is stand tall and reach deep red sorry i said again what will i do without you red pongo said softly you'll be fine my friend i promise we both fell quiet at last bongo shook herself feathers fluffing in any case maybe not the best time to be granting wishes is my point seems to me this is exactly the right time i replied bongo groaned her little old man groan she knew i wasn't backing down and with that we began to plan chapter 22 when executed plan number one an hour and a half later when Stephen had, or we executed plan number one an hour and a half later when Stephen headed off to school. He'd gotten only as far as the sidewalk, the sidewalk when Bongo drove straight down toward his backpack, poking at the zipper with her beak. She cawed frantically. When crows want to be loud, they can be extremely loud. What? Stephen cried. What's wrong with you, bird? He dropped his backpack to the ground. Bongo landed on the backpack, looking up at him. Chip, please, she said. Stephen rolled his eyes. Seriously? Hello, Bongo said. Chip, please. Stephen put his hands on his hips. Okay, fine. I've seen you in action. Work on the bus line. Bongo hopped to the ground as Stephen unzipped his backpack. You rock, she said politely. Stephen pulled out his lunch bag and opened it. Let's see. I've got a tuna fish sandwich, carrot sticks. But before he could say anything more, Bongo plunged into the backpack, grabbed a sheet of paper, and flew skyward. Hey, that's my English homework, Stephen cried. Come back here, you thief. Bongo flew high into my branches and landed with a victorious caw. Stephen stalked around the bottom of my trunk where the yellow police tape encircled me. Please, crow, he pleaded. I'll give you my whole sandwich, please. Bongo perched on the paper, freeing her beak. No way, she replied. A few more minutes of grumbling and Stephen gave up. Great, he muttered as he grabbed his backpack miss kellerman is never going to believe me when i told her a, when i tell her a crow ate my homework <laughs>